there we go. I think I've got everything up and running. Give it just a few minutes to have everybody uh, on. We're going to cover um, uh, two of my favorite tips uh, today is was uh, know before you go and always get a yes. And so uh, it's good to see everybody jumping on. Make sure uh, this is just going to be 30 minutes. So make sure you've blocked off this time to stay on here. I believe today's tips uh, will work for anyone, whether or not you're fully engaged into a referral marketing strategy or you're just starting out and getting out there and you're kind of wondering, well, how do you take and turn networking activities into actual um, what I call investments into your success? Uh, you know, so we're going to talk about some different tips on here. So I'm giving just a few minutes. Looks so like people are logging in. Um, just remember, I uh, leave your comments. Uh, some of them I can see, just depending on the way we're doing the dual uh, broadcast. Make sure that uh, you leave your comments. If you have any questions or anything like that, um, I'll go back and, and watch the afterwards and, and try to answer those through the comments. And then, of course, we'll be on every single day sharing different tips. So I'll make sure. If I know that a topic is going to cover that question, I'll make sure you get tagged on exactly when it is I'm going to cover that particular technique. So excited to have everybody on here. We do have this being uh, broadcasted on multiple Inspired channels. So uh, we have this in the Inspired uh, Ignite Experience 2019 group. And then, of course, uh, right here in Inspired Nation. Um, good to see you, Miss Liz and Stacy and Mitch. Um, so it's good to see everybody jumping on. Let's talk about uh, know before you go. Okay, so this is a big deal for me because a lot of times I've been training. I'm trying to figure I've got two cameras going. So if y'all see my eyes going back and forth, that's what it is. Um, one of the biggest things that I see is how people prepare and actually interact when they go to a networking event. And a lot of times I see people leave opportunities on the table when they go, or they completely work an event, what I consider, you know, in a less effective way. We'll just put it that way. Sort of saying, you just do it wrong, okay? So let's talk about know before you go. So one of the things that I always do when I'm sitting down with a client and we're talking about mapping out their, their strategy, you know, where, where are you going to be visible at? Where are you going to go out there and increase uh, you know, what a pe people's awareness that, you know, this is what you do, uh, who you are, uh, you know, let people know. And I think it's, it's who you are as a professional, how you, how you show up within your profession. Um, and that can come from, you know, just preparing, you know, where are you going to go? And so when we're sitting down and we're mapping out their, you know, the, the upcoming months, and I, I believe in calendar blocking. So I think that, um, you know, being prepared and, and looking ahead and going ahead and putting things in your calendar is a way that it keeps you very intentional and it allows you to, to work around uh, you know, your, your referral marketing activities that should be built into your calendar. And it also keeps it from being um, where people go out there and go, oh, I wish I'd gone to that event if I had only, you know, put it in my calendar or I just found out about it or I saw it on Facebook. Um, you know, go ahead and do a little bit of research ahead of time. So that's one of my first tips. Do a little research ahead of time. Um, and there's so many resources out there between community online bulletins, you know, depending on where you live, you can log on and search on Eventbrite for local events that are taking place, Google, Facebook search, and there's multiple ways that you can attend uh, networking activities, whether or not um, your local chambers, uh, go check out uh, your, your even activities that are being hosted. And again, it's going to depend on your target market, but where do you think, you know, is it a festival? Is it a health fair? Is it, um, you know, something that's going on? Is it a lunch and a breakfast? Is it hosted by, you know, um, is it a golf tournament? You know, whatever it is. I mean, so these are, I don't want people to think that there's just one way to go to a networking activity. Um, mixes and mingles take place all the time. Lunches take place. Breakfast take place. It could be a small group networking event. It could be a closed networking activity or an open networking organization. And so there's multiple ways that you can choose what you need to attend. 
So one of the things I do is like, you have all these choices out there. And one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is when, especially when they get into referral marketing is that they think they have to go to everything, right? They think they have to go to everything all the time. And for some people, especially the more introverted uh, you are, that immediately is going to scare you off right? Like I, I can't do all this. If this is what it takes to go out there and grow my business and this is networking, then that's going to, um, you know, scare me and I'm not going to go and do that. So one of the things for my ext extroverts, like that's really appealing, right? Because one of the things that we like to do is we like to get out there and we like to network. And therefore some of the things that we compromise on that end, you know, like, am I getting everything done back at my desk that I needed to get done? Am I servicing the clients I already have while I'm out there trying to chase the next one? Um, am I at so many events that, and this is a true story. I've seen people at so many events that if you actually get into a conversation with other people about that person, this is what I hear all the time. I don't know when they ever get to work on their business. Like, you never want anyone to sit there and go, well, when are they ever going to get to work on their business? Like they, you need to be taken as serious as a business professional as possible. So you want to make sure that it's a, it's a good balance, right? Uh, last thing you want to do is go out there and go do so many networking events that you're having to apologize to your client base, right? Cause you don't have the time built in to pop for follow up and things like that. You also don't want to be someone who, um, that I say it's only diving at a surface level because you're trying to go and be at everything, you really fail to have that time to go deep with the relationships you're kind of meeting. So, um, so sit down and, and look at your calendar at least three months out, okay? At least three months out and look around your community and see what is available. And if you know your tendency is to go to a smaller crowd, look for that. If you, if you know that you need to go and, and interact in a larger crowd, look for that. Uh, there's some tips that you can do in each one of those, especially my, the ones that are a little shyer. You know, there's some things that you can do. We're going to cover that in just a moment. If going to a larger event intimidates you, but you know you need to be there. Okay, so let's, let's first look at your calendar and go ahead and map out what are some of the things that I'm actively going to do. And one of the things I teach is color blocking. So for me, I will map out my, my calendar and any activity that I'm doing where I am actively working on my business rather than in my business, on my business, I, you know, in mine is purple. Okay. So I have those activities uh, mapped out, whether or not it's a, a attending an event, a strategy session, if it's, um, you know, making follow-up phone, you know, calls or whatever with my strategic power partners, whatever it is, if it's an activity where I'm actively working on generating business growth for me through, you know, through networking, through working on my business, then it's in my calendar. So I go ahead and I look ahead uh, of what's out there. What do I want to go to? And so now that I've got a couple of events that I'm considering and I'm looking at, uh, you know, uh, community events, like I said, fundraisers, mixes, mingles, lunch and learns, um, set groups that you're, you know, maybe you're already involved with, map it out. Map out the time it's going to take for you to be involved with it. So when you're putting it on, don't just put the time on there that the meeting is. Go ahead and give yourself that cushion. Is it drive time to get there? Um, you know, if it's virtual, great, then your time is just logging on. But what is that time that you're going to put in to, to travel there and get back to, to your business? Okay. Um, make sure you've got that entire time marked off. The next thing I want you to do is evaluate who, who are you planning on actually, why are you going to that event? Like, what is that purpose? Why did you choose that event over any other one? Is it because of the professionals that are going to be there? Is it, um, is it industry? You know, so one of the things we talk about when in referral marketing is that you're, you're actively should be trying to grow your three list of referral generators. So one, you know, is your strategic alliance list and that's based on your target market. 
One is your industry collaborators list, which is based on people who are in similar industries with you. And then one is your power partner list. And of course the power partner list is everyone that's in your network that wouldn't fit on list one or two, but they're actively engaged into your success story. So when I'm getting ready to evaluate which events I'm going to put my time into, then I have to figure out who do I think is going to be at that event and which list do I feel it's going to service? And that's where it gets tricky. You see, because first of all, you have to have a list. Like you have to know who your potential referral generators, you know, are going to be if you don't have referral generators that you're meeting with on a regular basis and, uh, or that you know are actively referring your business, right? So, You've got these lists out there. And for some of you, if you if you really sit down and, and generate this list, you may have industries that you would love to connect with, but there's no person's name there. Like there's no one that you can pick up the phone and say, hey, this is how you can help me grow my business right now, because you don't really have a relationship with someone that's in that industry. So one of the things I do is I go look at my list and I go, well, who what industries am I looking to really develop a relationship with? Because either we're sharing the same target market or we're an industry collaborators with one another. And, and so I begin to do some evaluation. Maybe I'll call someone that I know already attends that event um, on a regular basis and I'll ask them about it. Or I'll call the organizer or email them and say, can you tell me a little bit about your agenda or what the purpose is behind the, uh, behind the meeting? And, I try to make an informed decision on whether or not this is where I need to put my time. Okay. And there's with even activities, you know, is it an event that you need to actually sponsor a table and work it? Um, you know, and it's not necessarily I always tell people that people walking around an event is your target market, but the other vendors at the event are your potential referral generators. Right. And so I begin to think, well, what other vendors are going to be there? Um, what are those opportunities I'm going to have to connect with other referral generators? And so when I can take a step back and understand that there's a strategy to going to events rather than trying to make a sale, right? Or um, it looks good for me to be there. Okay, well, maybe it does. But is that actually moving you closer and closer to actually referral generation or business growth generation? Or is it just something that you put on your calendar because you're supposed to get like, I remember when I worked and I think this, this really hits a lot of times when you work for someone, even if you're in on a sales team or your, your role is to represent the company. Um, I see companies buying memberships all the time. Um, and then they'll send their employees to this lunch and learn. And first of all, all of them sit together. So how effective was that? And then second, it's, did you sit down and strategize before you sent your employees there with here's the industries we're looking to connect with or if you see this person we want to try to make this connection on behalf of our clients or on behalf of our other referral generators like there should be some type of strategy to to the time that you're investing into that whether it's yourself or your team you know there it shouldn't be happen chance and I always love when great things happen when there's a lack of planning, but how cool would it be if you were actively working on your business before you actually get to that event? And so really stopping and evaluating the event, what time it is, does it really fit in your calendar? Can you commit for the entire time the event is doing? A lot of times people will show up to an event and, and, and they come to ours and they'll come to it and go, well, I have to leave a little early and I want to go, okay, well, why, why, why did you even sign up? And, and because some events, you need to be there the entire time to actually benefit from the entire event. Otherwise, you just came to something and maybe you got this much of what that entire event was going to offer. And so, you know, I always kind of sit there because especially with our, I love the ones that I need to leave a little early. Well, most of the time in a lot of the stuff that I train and do, the part that you're leaving a little early was like the part you really needed to be there, you know, because most of the time in the beginning of a meeting is more of a mingle, people sitting down, exchanging cards, like you're leaving at when it really starts getting good. And so 
if you, if you can, if you really can't commit to being somewhere, then why did you block it off in your calendar to begin with? Um, because this is what happens, right? You think you're leaving discreetly. You think that, um, well, no one will notice. It's no big deal if, if I leave a little early, but you could be distracting people from what maybe what's happening in the meeting uh, by you leaving. Um, you could, um, you know, maybe someone's counted on you being there and wanting to talk to you at the end of the meeting and then you're gone. Um, you know, you showing up and I always say there's some people, right? That it's like they've graced us with their presence by being there. And I'm like, look, I get that. If you, if you just want to do that, that's fine. Let's do that if we go over there on, you know, to lunch or something one day. But when I'm going to a meeting to grow my business, I want to be surrounded by people who are intentional about growing their business. Like I want to have conversations with people about how we can help each other, how we can move forward. And, you know, I really don't need someone just to show up to show up. And, and that's really whether or not that's any meeting I go to, whether it's one I'm hosting or one that I'm attending, you know, for myself, you know, going out there and working. I, I really want to be surrounded by people who are on fire about their business. And so I'm, I'm very picky about the events I go to and, and I'm very picky about how I prepare for them and how I get ready for them. And then of course the conversations I'm having at the event. And that's really what I want to talk about here. So understand the events, why you're going to them, um, you know, make it intentional, block them out on your calendar. So it's not a surprise and you forget that you signed up to go. Um, if there is an RSVP that is necessary for you to be there, um, you need to do that because a lot of people, especially organizers and things like that, they're making arrangements with the venue to make sure there's enough chairs, enough food. Um, and of course the check-in process is always easier when someone knows that you're coming and they can prepare accordingly. So if you see that, yes, you must register, then register. If there's a fee to pay to be there, you should pay your fee to be there. Um, because I guarantee you, most of the time there's a fee on the organizer's expense that they're having to pay on your behalf. So you want to make sure and honor that event and honor, you know, honor the organization that's putting it on. The other thing you want is if you register for something and you know way ahead that something's already come up and you're not going to be able to attend that event, you need to reach out to the organizer and just let them know. Um, a lot of people think no shows are no big deal, but they really are a big deal because again, there's probably been some upfront prep work. And if we know you're not going to be there or there's a potential maybe, okay, well, if you can't attend this one, would you like us to change your reservation over to another meeting? And that could always be an option and you'll never know. And so I, I, I think of how many people have registered for events that I've hosted and they didn't show up. And of course we didn't know they weren't going to be a show. So there was no option at that point to do the refund because we've already prepped for, but man, if I had just known ahead of time, I probably could have moved them on up to a future event and they wouldn't have been out of that money. And so there's, you know, there's always options for that. The other thing you want to think about too is how are you going to show up at an event? And that means I always say with your best self forward, right? If you need to stop and take time and, and have things like maybe you work out of your car and, and maybe with what you do, uh, you could get dirty or under houses, in houses, whatever. Um, go ahead and have a change of clothes. Have something, whether or not it's a, it's a fresh t-shirt or a fresh shirt. Um, always think no matter what, you need to show up as your best self forward. And, you know, and that means dressing, dressing to represent your profession, your business, who you are. Um, have those name tags. Uh, I always say the best thing you can ever walk in with is your handshake, you know, a way for people to know your name uh, and, and your smile. Like I love, yes, I believe in business card exchanging. Okay. And we're actually going to cover um, in a couple of these uh, training tips over the next couple of weeks, what I call the business card shuffle. But I believe that, you know, you need to take in a positive professional attitude. And that means showing up, you know, on time, which, you know, depending on the event, might be a few minutes earlier than when they say the event's starting. Um, especially if you're someone who is afraid of a large crowd, like that really intimidates you. And I used to never think about this as being an issue until I started having clients tell me that 
there were several events that they would have come to to that I hosted or things that I did and they never got out of their car like they worked up the nerve to get to the parking lot but they never got out of the car and I've thought over the years, I was like, how many people has, has that been? Like, you know, if that's you, like say, okay, I've done that. Like I've gone to an event and I've, I haven't been able to work up the nerve to go in. It looked like a really big crowd. I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I'd be a fraud. I thought someone would ask me a question I wasn't prepared for. I don't have all my business cards ready. I'm in between jobs. Like all of these negative things that are, that are holding you back actually kept you in the car. Like, and I'm like, oh my gosh, if I'd just known. Um, so here's the thing. If large crowds do scare you, show up a little early. One, you're walking in. While it's still small, you can meet the organizer. You can get your space. And I know for, for the people, like sitting down sometimes is your comfort zone. Um, but it lets you kind of work the room. And then as people are registering and coming in the door, the room is growing but it's not like you're walking into a large crowd. It's just growing around you and you can meet those first few people and talk to them and engage in a conversation. It makes it much easier to do that. I'm going to stretch some of you who like to come in and sit right down and fail to, you know, to, to mingle. Um, try to stretch yourself to talk, to get up and at least go talk to one person or Keep your body language open, even if you are sitting at the table. You know, don't sit at the table, look at your phone. You know, even if, you know, it's scary to be standing up, you know, stand up and hold on to the back of your chair or slide your chair open. So, and kick the other chair right beside you, like kick it open a little bit so someone sees that you're welcome to have someone sit down and have a conversation with you. Um, so there's some different things that you can do. You don't always have to be standing, but you certainly don't want to have this tunnel vision thing going on where it's like, okay, I'm here, but I really hope no one, I'm on my phone, I hope no one talks to me kind of thing. Um, so, you know, keep that body language open, you know, make sure that people make eye contact. And, and this is the thing, even if it's really scary, just go in and make eye contact and, and, and leave it, you know, take your smile, your smile is a big deal. <laughs> Take a smile and say, I'm approachable. I want people to come in and network with me. And of course, the way you dress. All right. So um, I always tell ladies, uh, if you don't want people looking here, then, you know, if you want them looking here, don't give them things to look at here. Right. Um, and, and it's so important because I'll have women that they'll come and they'll tell me, I, you know, I feel like people aren't taking me serious or whatever. And I'm like, okay, well, first of all, Let's think about where your name tag is, okay? You know, if you've got a lanyard and your name tag's hanging right here, trust me, I'm telling you, I have had plenty of gentlemen come to me and go, Amy, when you're training, you know, how to work an event, can you tell the ladies, could they tighten up their lanyard a little bit and get their name tag up a little higher? Because it's kind of awkward. We're trying to look at names, but we're also trying not to create an awkward moment. So let's get those lanyards up a little bit. If it's got a pin, you know, go ahead and pin it up a little higher. Um, and of course, you know, there's a whole thing if you're right handed or left handed, um, you know, I've always been trained that you put the name tag where you're going to be reaching out and shaking the hand so that it's visible, people can read it. And even if you are running into people that you've known for years, I promise you, you are go there are going to be people that are going to be very grateful that you have your name tag on because I have people come up to me all the time and they'll just start a conversation. I'm going, I know them like. I know them, I know what they do, but their name, it is gone. It is not in my head. So I definitely want to make that connection and be able to use their name, make introductions. Like I want to introduce them to someone else. And so having, having that information. Now for the ladies, um, one of the things I do is I keep my big old business, uh, pocketbook in my trunk locked up or I don't even take it out of the house. And I take what I call my networking uh, you know, my networking clutch. It's it's really a pocketbook that's with a long strap that fits around and it really holds my phone. Um, phones have gotten bigger. It used to be that phones could sit in pockets and stuff, but phones have gotten bigger, but so have the, the pocketbook have gotten real creative. So it allows us to have our phones, make sure they are on silent. There is nothing worse than interrupting a meeting or speaking with your phones going off. 
know how to work your phone. Okay. If, if, you know, I've seen people, the phone's going off, going off, and they're literally sitting over there trying to figure out how to turn, like be familiar with how you turn your phone ringers off. Okay. And, and if you have it on vibrate, that's just as annoying if everyone can hear the vibrate and it's sitting on the table and it's like rattling the, the table. Um, so just understand there is etiquette when it comes to your mobile devices. So make sure those are off. But for the ladies, I always say have it in those phone clutches that are out there now. Um, of course, you can take your driver's license in. I always say take, you know, take a 20 or, or, or 40. One, if there's costs that you weren't aware of. Or two, if there's an open bar, you want to buy someone, you know, a drink. You've got your cash in there. But the biggest thing is, is that should be all you have. Your hands are free. Now, guys, you guys are really lucky because most of your most of your clothes have pockets. So women have pocket books, right? And you can tuck your stuff away. But the one thing I want you guys to leave out is your business cards. And especially for women, we have a tendency of our business cards get tucked in about 100 different pockets we have in that pocketbook, or they work their way down at the bottom. Or what's worse is how many times have you ever pulled out a business card and it hasn't been yours, or it's yours and your grocery list is on the back of it, or worse yet, let's all be honest, ladies, we blotted our lipstick and we've got a big old kiss on the back of it. How inappropriate would that be to pass a business card with that? Um, or they're dirty. Like business cards are dirty. They just, they're not clean. And so um, one thing you can do is keep a Ziploc in your car, you know, so everything's nice, neat and clean. Business card holders are out there, but go ahead and pull those out. Okay. So one of the things that I do is when I go into a networking event, my hands are free, right? And very rarely, you know, if I'm there networking, I'm growing the business, will you ever see a plate or a drink in my hand? Usually it's at the end or something but I have my business cards in one hand and my other hand is ready to, for, to shake hands. And of course my smile. I mean, if you take that into a meeting and, and leaving your body language open, I've got my business cards, I got my handshake. Now it's not, I've got my business cards, So I go in there and it's like the business card, you know, 52 pickup where I'm going in there and throwing them out to everyone. No, I have my business cards because during the conversation, I ask the person I'm talking to for their card first. And by asking them for their card, it allows them, you know, obviously to give them their card, allows them, but it now gives them permission to ask for mine. And then I can give it to them based off their request versus, well, here's my card and everyone in the room needs my card. So like, you, you need to be careful with that. Um, and then, of course, uh, I keep in my little clutch a little bitty Sharpie. And I use a Sharpie because in case you get someone's business card that's got the glossy or it's hard to write on, um, if we've had something in our conversation that I want to follow back up on, maybe I'll put how to pronounce their name on the back of the card or that they liked, you know, maybe there was something in our conversation. They have kids or dogs or a football team or something about their business. Um, I'll write it on that when they leave. That way I have some information that I have with that card. And by having a little small Sharpie, it allows me to write on most cards that I get. The other thing is, is when I get ready, and this feeds us right into the always get a yes. When I go to a networking event, I'm not walking into the room looking for my target market. Okay, and I think that's one of the biggest mistakes most professionals make. They walk into a room thinking that in order to justify my time away from being away from my desk, I've got to be able to bring in a client from this. And so they go in with the mindset of being in sales mode versus a referral marketing mode. And this is such an important topic. We are actually going to be covering that in an upcoming event on here. But when I go to an event, one of the things I'm looking for is instead of trying to see if anyone's dropping trigger words or, or, and for some of you, you will never hear your trigger words at an open networking event. So what I'm doing instead is I'm looking at name tags. I'm looking at business cards. I'm looking at other vendors tables and I am making that, you know, that, analysis on whether or not this is someone I can connect with that needs to be on my referral generators list. So I'm looking for potential, you know, collaborators. I'm looking for potential golden goose relationships. And this is still prospecting, right? Because 
just exchanging a business card at a networking event doesn't make us all credible with one another. And therefore, because now I've met you, you know, I had the chicken lunch with you. We've exchanged business cards with one another. Automatically, I'm going to send you every one of my clients. Like if stop the madness with that, right? I go prospecting for potential referral generators when I attend networking activities. I'm looking for people who I want to start the wanting, willing, and able process of taking them from being a prospective referral generator for me to someone who is fully engaged into my success story. And you need to go looking. I say it's a lot like, you know, back when we were all dating, like you're going to meet some people that look great. And then when you sit down and begin the process of, of what would that look like if we begin to refer one another and you realize this is not someone that I would ever be able to put in front of a client of mine. And so the only way you ever get to know that is this is the key about referral marketing, ready? Right? Here's, here's the whole bottom line tip about referral marketing. You actually have to exchange words. It's based on communications. And the more you can communicate with each other, the more you can develop the confidence with one another and credibility with one another in order to start generating referrals and opportunities. So when you're going to a networking event, don't walk away from an event. If you didn't make a sale, consider it a loss of your time. Instead, you should be walking in with the opportunity that if I could walk away with one or two people that I can do a follow-up with and sit down with them over coffee or over a phone call over business and figure out whether or not this is something that would allow me to begin to explore whether or not we could potentially be referral generators with one another. Because let's face it, a transactional referral is great. There's no doubt about it. We love transactional referrals, but wouldn't it be more beneficial to your bottom line, to your growth development you know, strategy, if you were to develop a group of people who were actively referring you on a regular basis? I mean, it's, it's kind of like taking, okay, I can go after the one, the one transaction, or I can go after building a sustainable business model that is going to grow my business three months from now, six months from now, 12 months from now. And what I have found over the years is in the beginning, I did a lot of networking and then I have developed referral generators. And the more I develop referral generators, I'm still networking, but I'm not having to go to what I call as many networking events right now i can spend in my calendar blocking my networking activities is way more strategic because now i'm meeting with people who are referral generators for me and so while my calendar blocking time is still blocked for for working on my business the activities have changed i'm not going out there with well i wonder who could help me grow my business to i'm working with the people who are growing my business and it begins to what I call it is the snowball effect yes you've got to make it up that mountain to be able to grow your business but once you do that once you do that and then you begin to dump into those relationships and you begin to go through the wanting willing and able process of converting them into a referral generator you begin to see how your business can grow with all of a sudden it's, it's a lot easier like all of a sudden your, your referrals are coming to you. And if you do it right, and of course, this is one of the tips we're going to be talking about also coming up. Gosh, there's a big difference between the shotgun approach of growing your business versus here's an ideal client for me. And this is how it can be generated. So let's, let me get to the always get a yes so we can close this up for today. So once I've got in my mind, I'm going to an event that I believe I will have the potential to meet opportunities for people who can be referral generators for me. I go prepared, dressed, professional. I've got my business cards. I've got my handshake. I've got my positive on fire for my business, winning attitude in there with me. And I'm prospecting for potential referral generators rather than target market. So I'm not in sales mode. I am in growth, business growth development mode. Okay, my marketing strategy mode. And I have that opportunity and I'm meeting someone. 
And in that opportunity of making that exchange of our business cards, and I'm reading their name tags and I'm reading their business card, I see there's a potential in this person to be on one of my list, right? Either it's very obvious they're in my industry, which we should be able to kind of recognize that, um, or I see someone who I think based off all the work I've done prior to coming, that they may share my same target market. I asked them, could you tell me a little bit about what your ideal client looks like? And here's the deal. Some people are not gonna be referral marketing savvy. So they are going to take that question and they're going to, this is what you said. Tell me about your target market. This is what they hear. This is what you want me to tell you about what I sell. And it's just gonna happen. So one of the things you want to do is if they go into sales mode and they're telling you all about their products and services, listen politely and then go, you know, that's really great. Now, can you tell me who it is that actually buys that product or service from you that you would love to repeat over and over again? So you're now you're taking their information and still bringing it back to the who, right? Not what you do, but who is your target market? When you can get someone who their who is your who, use this always get a yes. Okay, you ready? Say, so, you know what? The reason why I was asking you that is because that is also a target market I work with. And therefore I have clients that have the potential to need your product or services. But I only like to refer or recommend to my clients people that I actually get to know and that I have confidence that they're gonna be able to take care of them. Is there any way that you and I can get together over coffee and I can learn more about you and your business and how you take care of your clients so that if there's a need that my clients have and you are the solution for it, I would feel comfortable being able to recommend your product or services. May I follow up with you after this meeting and see if we could sit down over coffee one day and see what that would look like. If you think about it, I promise you, I've never, I've never been told no with that. That's why I call it my always get a yes. Let's see. You want to know about my business because you have clients that have a potential need for my product or services. And all I have to do is to get you to know me and how I would take care of them. And then if they have a need or service, you would feel confident in bringing me up. In other words, you want to recommend me if I can become credible in front of you. And so it's not like I sat there and gave them a guarantee. It wasn't like, hey, if we get together over coffee, I'll give you all my clients, right? What I said is, if I have a client that has a need or service and I feel comfortable with you and how you're gonna take care of my client, your client, then I would be able to make a recommendation. Recommendations are no guarantees, right? They're opportunities, but I would be open to doing that but we have to get to know each other first. And it also leads us to, we get together, you know, outside of this networking activity, we get together and it's kind of like going on a first date. You know, you get to find out about each other and that's what we call an introductory strategy session. So there are three levels of strategy sessions. I am going to um, cover that in another lesson coming up, but I want you guys to understand you got to get there and you got to meet them because you could walk away from that event and think no way I would ever put that person in front of a client or you may sit down with them and go, Oh my gosh, this is exactly who I, my clients need. And this would be a great person. And sometimes you're going to sit down and it's going to click and you're going to end up, you know, being referral partners, you know, fast, you know, but it's got to start somewhere. And I think it needs to start with at least a conversation rather than an exchange of a business card and a handshake while we're at a meeting, at a networking meeting. Like it needs to have some substance to it. So my always get a yes technique is really about just taking that perspective referral generator activity, that networking activity and honing it in to another networking activity, but one that begins that process of wanting willing and able wanting willing and able and of course that process is whether where you begin to take them through is this someone that has that potential to be a referral generator for me or or is it someone has potential referral generator for another 
you know, for a client of mine or another referral generator of mine or someone else. And um, this is where the magic begins to start taking place. And I, I, I do attend networking events. So, you know, it is something I do, but I'm very strategic with the ones I go to. I don't have to go to a hundred of them a month. Um, a lot of my time is built in developing my referral generators. And because of that, I can safely say that uh, I, I, I don't pay for leads. I don't, you know, I don't cold calls. They're gone. Haven't done one. You know, I'm cold call free and um, all of my business, all of my business comes from referrals and, um, and I believe in it, but it starts with knowing how to go to the right event and then utilizing that event to actually get people to that process. Um, Michael, you were like open-ended questions. Yes, we've got some tips. Like when we talk about strategy sessions and upcoming, we've got some tips of ways that you can move people through uh, how to actually do successful strategy sessions so that you can actually get to good information. And, um, but I think, you know, just having an honest conversation at a networking event, this is why I'm here. This is who I'm looking to connect with. This is the target market I work with. I think those are really good conversations to have at a networking event, um, much better than selling, right? No one wants to be sold to an event. And then it also your measure of success. You're able to go sit in your car and go, I accomplished something at this event versus you get in the car and you didn't make a sale. It's like, oh, this is a waste of time. I shouldn't have gone to that event. I don't know why I pay for this every month. I don't know why I do an annual event. Look, most of the time, it's not the events you're going to that's wrong. It's how you're working them and understanding how to work a closed networking event versus an open networking event. There is strategy to it. And a lot of it really comes down to how are you going to show up and what do you have to say? And uh, so think about that. And, and this kind of concludes our tips today. Um, I'm back on tomorrow. So it's out in the event. So watch for that. And I believe Julia has in the header every single morning, the time and the topic of what I'll be on every day. Um, so you can pop on here, watch me live. I'll be going back and reading the comments with any questions that you guys might have. If you're watching this back on replay, put hashtag replay for me so that I know you guys are going back and watching this. Um, but I, I, I really hope everybody, as you go out and practice, I think I put a question on one of the things that, um, what are some of your strategies? How do you prepare going to, uh, going to events? And how have you gotten people to sit down with you if you're already in doing referral marketing? And uh, how have you gotten people to sit down with you? And of course, I'm always interested in your success story with it. What does it look like? And then of course, Go ahead and share us some horror stories too. Um, I, you know, sometimes we learn from things that have gone wrong. Uh, so share some of that too. I'm looking for all of that in the comments below so that we can help you guys move forward. You guys have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining me on here. I'm Amy D. Kilpatrick. I'm the president of Inspired Business Solutions, and I hope I've inspired you today about referral marketing.